and strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Now I've got some division problems up here. Every one of them has a divisor of 13, which is the reason I wrote my multiples of 13 up to 9. Why do you stop at 9, Mr. McMurdo? Because I'm only putting one number at a time at the top in my quotients. Only one number at a time in my quotients. Right? Right. So let's take the first one here. We have 326 divided by 13. Before I start, let me ask this question. And I'm asking this question of Susankia. What is the largest remainder I can have for this problem? 13. Nope. 12. 12. Because if I have 13, I need to add, it needs to add one more in my quotient. I can only have a remainder of 12. I will never have a remainder that is equal to or greater than my divisor. Never. Ever. So that is one way to look at it when you're doing this. Now, this is a lot of work, Mr. McMurdo. I don't care. I don't care. This, this is the hardest part about division. This is the hardest part about division, and every one of you know how to multiply by one-digit factors. Every one of you. So if you're willing to do the hardest part about division, then it's easy peasy, raw chicken squeezy. That's so disgusting. I know. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Now, another thing I want you to pay attention to, and I'm going to start with just a standard algorithm. I'm going to use partial quotients here in a little bit too. But you're going to have something above each number something above each number. It is vitally important that you put your first digit in the correct place. Vitally important. So then I ask, does 13 go into 3? No. no. So I'm going to have, I can put an X. I can put a 0. However I do it, but I need to know there is no value over 3. There is nothing in the hundreds place. Nothing. So if I look up here, I have zero hundreds in my quotient. Now I look, will 13 go into 32? My answer is yes. So now I look over the hardest part I did, multiplying by one digit factors, and I look at my, my uh, products and I get as close to 36 as I can without going over. Well, 39 is too big, so the closest I can get is 26. And 13 times 2 is 26. So then I know it's 2 up here. I've already done this multiplication. 13 times 2 is 26. Then I subtract 26 from 32. Well, let's see, 26 to 30 is 4, to 32 is 6. Then I have a 6 there. I bring my, down my next number, which is a 6. Whatever I use to go into 66 is going to go above this 6. It is. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So now I have... 66 that I'm dividing into. I go back over here to the hardest part of division. So those of you that say, I'm not good at division. This is the hardest part. And all of you can multiply by one digit factors. So if this is the hardest part of division, easy peasy, raw chicken squeezy. Now I need to get as close to 66 in my, fa or my products over here. Without going over 13, 26, 39, 52, 65, 78. 78 is too big, so I'm going to have to do 65. 13 times 5 is 65. 
So my five goes up here, my 65 there. I subtract, I have nothing else to bring down. So that is going to be my remainder. But I constantly get pestered by Zane saying, I really want to get a good grade on my work. How can I check this? And so I say, Zane, we can do, we can do multiplication, which the multiplication is the inverse operation, which is the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. And that should equal my dividend. Those are all weird words. That doesn't matter. You'll figure it out when I do an example. You'll figure it out when I do an example. So now I have 25 times 13. And I can easily do this because I could break it up. 25 times 3 times 25 times 10 or plus 25 times 10. That's 15. That's 75, 0, 5, 2, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 325. But I have to ask, add my remainder. Makes it 326. So I know my answer to this is 25 remainder 1. Now another method that we have is called the... Uh, partial product. The ten yeah, the partial product. So if I do the same problem, 326 divided by 13, and that's important to know too, that you say the number that's being divided into pieces first. So it's 326 divided by 13. Because if you say 13 divided by 326, I'm going to write this. 13 divided by 326, because that's what you said. You're going to say 326 divided by 13. But I digress. So now I'm going to do something called the partial product. I'm going to do some math that makes it easy for me. Okay, and I don't know if you've seen this. Well, I know you've seen it before because you were asked to watch a video over it, but that's okay. We're going to look at this anyway. So now I have 13, and I don't want to do all that hard math. That's just cray-cray. So I'm going to do 13 times 10. And I can do that in my head. And I know 13 times 10 is 130. Now I can go, that's 6, that's, uh, let's see, 3, 2... 12, 9, 196. Now I can go times 10 again because that's 130 and I can subtract 130 from 196 and I'm going to get 66. God bless you. Now, can I multiply by 10 again? No, no because I'm less than 130. But, you can do but I can go over here to the most difficult part of division, multiplying by one digit numbers. The most difficult part of division. And I find 65, so that's times 5. 65, I subtract, I get 1, nothing else to bring down. I add these things together, 10, 20, 5. And I have a remainder of one, which is what I did when I got the standard, when I did the standard algorithm. Okay, let's look at another one here. And I'll erase this because we're going to do the hardest part of division together on a different problem. Let's do 455 divided by 7. Now I gotta go over here and do the hardest part of division. 
Seven times one equals seven. Seven times two equals 14. Seven times three equals 21. Seven times four equals 28. Seven times five equals 35. Seven times six equals 42. Seven times seven equals 49. Seven times eight equals 56. And seven times nine equals 63. I have just finished the hardest part of division. I have just finished the hardest part of division. That is it. That is the hardest part of division. Okay, so now I need to figure out where my first digit goes in. Now, I'm going to look, does 7 go into 4? My answer is no, because no, 4 is smaller than 7. Then I know 7 goes into 45, because 45 is greater than 7. So I go over here, and I look, and I find the product that is closest to 45 without going over, and that is 42. So I know 7 times 6 is 42. Now I subtract, I get 3, and I bring down the 5. I go back over here to the hardest part of division, and I find out I want to get as close to 35 as I can get without going over, and it's 7 times 5 is 35. 65, 35, subtract, 0, so I have nothing as my remainder. But Zane texts me again, and he's like, dude, I really want to get 100 on this. How in the world can I check it? And so I say, dude, this is how you can check it. And we multiply our quotient times our divisor. We don't have a remainder, so when I multiply my quotient times my divisor, I should get 455. 7 times 5 is 35, 7 times 6 is 42, plus 3 is 45. So unless I made the same mistake here as I did here, then I got it correct. Now let's do it partial product wise. Oh, that's fun. That is fun. So I have 455 divided by 7, partial product-wise. Um, I want to be able to do this in my head. So I could go 70. What if I multiplied by 20? What's 7 times 20? 140. 140. So let's do that. Let's do that. So times 20. We said is 140. Wait, can you time, times it by 100? I could times it by 100. But 7 times 100 is what? 700. 700. So that's bigger than 455. Okay, so I'm going to get 5, 1, 345. So I can times it by 20 again, which is 140. I'm going to subtract... And so I get 5 to 11, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 7, so 175. You can do it again. I can multiply by 20 again, and I have 140, and that's going to give me 35. And then I can look over here at the hardest part of division, and I see 35 is right here. And so that's 5, and that's 35, subtract, and I get 0. Then I just have to add these up, 20, 40, 65, and that works. What? I, you add, is it 175 times 20? No, it's 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 20 is 140. 7 times 5 is 35. You're doing 7. Yeah. Now, why is it important 
that we know. Why is it important that Zane tell us that we need to be able to multiply to check our answers? That's a good question, Zane. And let me tell you this. Yes, so your grade will be good. But also, if you miss a division problem, you're going to go back and you're going to do it again Proving your answer with multiplication. So tomorrow when you have a division problem and I ask you to and you miss it, you'll go back and prove it with multiplication. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Brindley, you be gone. So... If you want to save yourself from having to doing it more than once, you're going to make sure it's correct the first time, and multiplication is one way to do it. Partial product is one way to do it. We'll continue practicing the multiplying with base 10 blocks, and that's another way to do it. But you will get back every division problem you miss. You'll get back, and I'll say redo it and prove it with multiplication. So that'll be instead of doing it once or maybe twice, you'll end up having to do it three more times because you'll have to prove it with the standard algorithm with multiplication and with the partial product. So save yourself. Instead of doing it six times, do it twice and make sure it's correct. I'm just saying, save yourself some time. Boom, shakalaka, peace out. God bless, love you, do something kind today. Save the bees. Please subscribe. I want to be rich and famous. I'll still teach because I love my job. Mm.